Welcome back. Today we are taking a bit of a sidestep and doing our first currently reading. Currently reading is where we take a trip into a library and dig out some books to read. Sort of like a book club. We are checking out Christopher Paolini's epic fantasy, Aragon. Please note that this will have multiple parts as I am doing this in segments as I read. I'm hoping to do one for every book in the Inheritance series. You're listening or rather, watching Utter Randomness's podcast, I'm Lou your host, this isn't my voice, and this is a currently reading. Spoilers for this point on. Aitra Estenio no Thelduan. Moran Malifa Anin Jarma Anra. Anatra Duvarina no Verda. Translation, may good fortune rule over you. Peace live in your heart. And the stars watch over you. Elven greeting in the ancient long which just a little background before diving into this book head first. The world of Aragon came in the form of teenage daydreams of Christopher Paolini. Paolini's love of reading and magic led him to construct the stories of the wondrous yet frighteningly powerful dragon riders and the majestic world of Alagisha. Riding Aragon actually started out as a hobby when he was 15, a challenge to himself and he actually didn't have aspirations to see this work published. After writing the first draft, he took another year to revise it before giving it to his parents. As a family, they took another year to proofread, edit, design a cover, create a manuscript, and prepare materials for promotions and advertisements. During this time, they decided to self-publicize Aragon and spend time promoting the book in libraries, schools, and bookstores. Eventually, a publisher from Alfred A. Knopf Books for Young Readers had the book brought to their attention. It was later published by them, where it became a New York bestseller soon after publication. Christopher Paolini became recognized by Guinness World Records in 2011, for being the youngest author to have a best-selling series. Not only did Paolini create the world of Alagisha, but he also created a new language, the map, the original cover of Aragon, and the stories of the Dragon Riders. Including the book's protagonist, Aragon. Aragon starts out with a prologue following a monstrous being called a Shade who is surrounded by other beings called Urgles. A Shade is a magic user that was once a human, elf, Urgle, or dwarf that has been possessed by a spirit or spirits. They adopt traits of superior strength and proficiency in magic. Regardless of how they were created or what being they once were, Shades are incredibly pale with maroon eyes and red hair. The shade we meet at the beginning of the story is called Dorza, and remember him, he makes a comeback. Urgles are humanoid beings that are tall with grayish skin and piggish eyes, they are considered expendable by Dorza, and are utilized as shock soldiers. Regarded as evil by most, they are not inherently so and can even use magic. Urgles are mostly uneducated and have their own language called Urgralgra. Dorza and the Urgles are tracking three elves through the forest, two males and a female. While the male elves are easily killed, the female elf isn't easily brought down by the Urgles or the Shade. Desperate, she pulls out a blue stone that she had been protecting in a pouch and casts a spell on it to send it far away. Furious at the events that unfolded before him, Durza captures the female elf, kills several Urgles, and burns the forest. We are introduced to Aragon, a farmer boy of approximately fifteen who is hunting when an explosion tears through the quiet of the forest. The stone which the elf had earlier, appears in a scorched circle. It's blue and polished. Because of the explosion, all of the animals that he had been trying to hunt have been scattered. Weighing his options, he picks up the stone with the intention of selling it for meat to last during the upcoming winter. Aragon is hunting in the Spine, a mountain range that borders his home village Carvajal, and runs down the west coast of Alagisha. Aragon is one of the few people who willingly hunt within the Spine, and it's because of the danger it represents from stories long told. The king, Calbautorix, lost much of his army in the Spine to the Urgles. Since then, the forests and mountains of the Spine have been considered bad luck. 
Aragon returns home and hunts for the butchers to trade the stone for meats with Sloane. However, upon learning that the stone was found within the spine, Sloane turns Aragon away. Refusing to sell to him, you learn that Sloane has never liked Aragon, but would typically sell to him. Horst, the blacksmith, gets in the middle of it and asks Sloane to sell to him. Buying the much-needed food and protecting Aragon from Sloane's wrath, Aragon learns that Katrina, Sloane's daughter, was the one who sought Horst out. Horst asks Aragon to give a message of love from Katrina to Roran, Aragon's cousin. Promising to repay Horst for his kindness by working at his smithery, Aragon heads home. Aragon lives on the outskirts of Carvajal with his uncle, Garo, and cousin, Roran. Carvajal is a tiny village with about 300 citizens. Carvajal remains mostly untouched by the Broadring Empire because of its remote and nearly isolated location. The only traffic that is usually seen through the remote village is the trappers and traders that journey out to trade and sell their wares. After the fight with Sloan, Aragon decides to wait for the traders to sell the stone to a jeweler. Note that the traders and trappers are late this season and when they do arrive they seem warrior and less prosperous than previous years. Aragon and Garo seek Murloc, a specific trader that specializes in trinkets and jewelry. However, after speaking privately with Murloc, the trader refuses to trade for the stone and informs them that the stone is actually hollow and possibly formed with magic. Murloc also tells them why they're late this season. Ominous luck has shadowed the caravan, they couldn't avoid a plethora of misfortunes like sickness, attacks, and attempted to avoid Urgles who have been attacking entire villages, including their fields, and forcing them to relocate. Troubled by this news, Aragon's uncle sets out to find more information, allowing Aragon to do what he wants. During Aragon's free time, he finds himself in the tavern where several traders are telling far-fetched stories about the Empire. The Empire was formed and follows King Galbatorix after his rise to power nearly a century ago. Carvajal has no love for the Empire, and it's almost a deep-seated hate for them. The Burden, which is on the opposite side of the book's political spectrum, are rebels fighting against the oppressive and harsh nature of the King and his Empire. Formed nearly at the same time as the King's rise, little is known about them and what they're after. Aragon leaves the chaos and malcontents in the tavern behind, eats dinner at Horst, and joins performers later that evening to spectate. Among the entertainers is a local storyteller, Brom. He is reciting the first stories of the Dragon Riders. This story is important for many reasons, and these reasons we'll get into a bit later. The Dragon Riders were formed to govern, guard and protect the lands of Alagesia, and for a thousand years succeeded in this endeavor. Dragon Riders were considered immortal, and while they could protect against outside threats, they could not compete against their own. Galbautorix, at the age of ten, was tested as tradition and custom dictated, and it was found that he was powerful. Growing in power under years of tutelage, he surpassed many in skill and was soon welcomed into the ranks of the riders. Others warned against this quick rise to power, but according to Brahm, the riders had grown arrogant in their years. After being welcomed as a rider, Kalbaltorix and several other of his fellow riders took a careless trip to test their new found abilities. They found themselves in Urgul territory, and as they slept Kalbaltorix's dragon, his friends, and their dragons were slain. In his grief, Kalbaltorix sought death and threw himself into whatever battled straight his way. Haunted and hunted by a deranged rider, those that happened to wander into his path, ran from him. Soon after, Kalbaltorix had a singular and driving thought, the riders might grant him another dragon. Driven by this, he spent months traversing through the spine to get back. Finally reaching the riders, the council was convened and Galbaltorex demanded another dragon. True colors revealed, the riders denied him a dragon and in his fevered and twisted mind, Galbaltorex blamed the riders for his dragon's death. Galbaltorex was eventually able to exact an act of twisted revenge with another rider named Morzan. Morzan was able to steal a hatchling, which grew into a black dragon named Shrukan. 
After teaching Morzan, Galbatorix revealed himself, with Morzan at his side, to the world. They fought any and all riders that came to challenge them. With each win, Morzan and Galbatorix grew stronger, and soon twelve other riders joined their ranks. Including Morzan, they became known as the Thirteen First Sworn. The dragon riders fell from grace and Galbatorix became the ruler of Alagisha. According to Garo, the story that Brom recites could actually cost him his life if the Empire ever caught wind of him telling it. Part 2 coming soon. If you want to follow along, this only includes the first three chapters of the book.